Thanks for joining me at Noyes Art Gallery and Studios for a little bit of information about how do you get your creative inspiration. And I'm going to show you a little bit about what I do. Um, I have no idea if this will prompt you, but I sure hope it might. And I'm also going to take you through a little bit of technique. So we'll see a couple of things going on here today. Anything you see uh, in the video today, I want you to know is just my opinion, my ways, and I just wanna share it with you. So I hope you have some fun with me because what I do is very spontaneous and not necessarily planned out. However, let me talk a little bit about inspiration <laughs> because, uh, you know, I'll, I find that when I start to work, I'm like, well, what am I going to do? And where am I going to get my ideas? And what should I paint? And how should it look? And, you know, all those things that leave you blank when you're staring at a blank piece of paper or a blank canvas. And so I really have three main areas that I like to draw my inspiration from and uh, maybe it's something that can spark with you. Uh, one of them, of course, is subject matter. I look at my life and I think about what I do and what I'm passionate about, and nature is a huge part of my life. Gardening, um, flower, uh, flowers especially. Um, I have a long history in that. My uh, grandmother and grandfather were avid farmers and gardeners, and I grew up eating, you know, the vegetables right out of the garden and decorating the table with beautiful cut flowers out of the garden. And so that has really continued in my life. And now in my own home, I have that kind of inspiration present. So I want you to think about your life and consider what around you constantly has just pulled you in ever since maybe you were a little kid? Or is it something new that inspires you? But what do you have a hot button about? That would be a really good place to start to try to have meaning and connection to your work um, because uh, sometimes it's hard to um, work if you're doing a subject or an idea that's for somebody else. You know, when you're creating for yourself, you want to be fulfilling your own soul and your own passion and your own heart. So uh, the other thing that inspires me are materials. And because I, third, tie into some design elements of color and texture as being very important elements in my work, um, that obviously comes from the garden. You know, I love the big color and the flashes of color from uh, flowers and the beautiful flashes of color in the sky or in the trees. All of those things, um, you know, spark me. And so um, as I work with my materials, I have to think about then what materials will match to what it is I want to do. So, you know, some materials are soft and gentle and, you know, snuggly and fuzzy and <laughs> that just doesn't fit with my bold pow that I want to get out of my materials to have color and emphasis on that energy in my work. So when you match up those three things, for me, I've got a subject that's very inspiring. I've got materials that get me going and are excited and they tie into that. And then third, um, you know, that whole idea with color and with texture being a very important thing that I want to see when my work comes out. So let's play with that a little bit this morning and think about how do I get started when I'm, you know, trying to decide what in the world am I going to do. And I brought along my uh, little resource folder here. Uh, I said I was an avid gardener and so um, I want to work from original ideas. And, you know, with all of this fabulous information online, it's really easy to go find a picture that you like and paint it exactly how you see it. Um, that is violating a copyright directly. And as an artist, we want to be very respectful of other people's ideas because we would feel offended if someone was copying our work. 
And so do keep that in mind. As an artist, how can you find your originality? Now, mine is from just working from my own subject matter. And so as you can see here, I have pulled together a lot of images that I've just, I take pictures in my garden. These are not like fancy 35 millimeter whoop de doopy photography. This is me just going out with my phone. And when I see something that sparks me, I photograph it. Oftentimes, um, like in this iris photo here, I'll photograph it from a lot of different directions and angles close-ups far away so that I have a little more subject matter to work with because I, when I take these into my studio, I don't quite know how, I'm not gonna paint what's in that little rectangle. And so um, I don't quite know how the subject is gonna be arranged. And I'll talk about composition here coming up. So you can see this photo of the butterfly Swallowtail is this painting right here. <laughs> no, it's not the painting, but you can see the inspiration from it. And when I painted this, I had more photos of this yellow daisy like flower. Um, I did not have more photos of the butterfly, but I felt like I had a really good a competent image to work from for some detail and clarity because abstraction is part of my work. I wasn't worried about that um, exact photo realistic kind of representation. And um, so you can see how parts from this photo came into this painting. And that's true on all of these pieces. Um, here's the inspiration of the main daffodil shape. Um, there's a little bit of inspiration you see coming from these leaves, but this painting does not look like that photograph. It, it's not like even an exact copy in that way. And that's where the materials come in as my inspiration and, you know, what the paint does and things like that. Uh, let's see, I've got a couple more here. I just wanted you to see though, on this hibiscus, however, it came across pretty directly as my main composition. I did some cropping and um, changed the color of it, you know, but for the most part, I kind of represented the direction and placement of the petals and energy of the flower and, you know, all of that pretty much the same. So um, having a good photo source, uh, I got to think the direction this one goes, here we go. Uh, this painting is not quite finished yet. Um, but you can see here, I even sometimes will just turn a photo around different directions in order to get, you know, kind of different viewpoint angles, things like that. But I have my own original source material that I work from, and that's really huge. Um, I'm not going online and finding cool photographs that Burpee has posted for their seed packets and using their photos to do my floral images. These are coming personally from my garden and these penny bushes came from my grandmother and this flower image I'm very engaged in and you know I, I have extra feeling and inspiration behind the way I want to represent it. And so I really want to encourage you to think about being original and pull together your subject matter. Oh, I love the um, moon flowers and you know I, I really I've got to talk about this one too <laughs> because my source image is very similar on this one you can tell you know flower position and all is is very similar however look what happened to the color in that piece and that came just from second the materials um, the materials I choose to work with are very spontaneous and so this as I continued to work this image and build the, the image, it turned more pink and it became this really beautiful, uh, kind of vibrant fuchsia in there just because of the way my materials came through. So um, allow yourself some freedom, you know, find your own inspiration, find your own subject matter connections, and then find your own sources for that information. If you like to draw buildings, then you need to go find your own images to, of buildings to draw from. Please don't steal off of other people's imagery. I think I rode my horse on that one. So um, 
let's go on then. And I've really shown you a lot about my inspiration in subject matter. I'm gonna tuck my images uh, into my folder here because I'll be coming back to those. And uh, let's consider some materials now. So as we are thinking about materials that we wanna use, we wanna match up the materials to our inspiration. To get my bold pow imagery out of my subject matter, I can't paint with really soft, fuzzy materials like chalk or watercolor. Now, I'm picking on those two because I have worked with those materials and I just don't feel the same expression and power out of them. Now, another artist may pop that out uh, you know, with the materials. So what I'm really talking about here is matching up your materials with your idea and what you want as a result to come out of it. And then finally, focusing in on composition. Um, how do I decide to start? And so um, I'm gonna show you a couple of ways that I would approach uh, getting a painting like this started because it'll show you how I explore materials for my uh, inspiration in technique. Um, there are a couple of things that I prefer to use as my materials. One is just good old uh, pre-stretched and pre-gessoed canvas. Um, if I wanted, uh, some of you who maybe work with alcohol inks know that you need a sealed surface in order to work with alcohol inks. I actually prefer the inks to like soak into the canvas. And so I, I don't even change the canvas at all when I work with that. Now, um, alcohol inks come in a, quite a variety and I just keep um, kind of organized buckets of different colors. Uh, you know, I've got like my reds, my orangey kind of colors. I've got my yellows, my yellow oranges. I've got my greens. Um, these look like these are all neutrals earthy colors and then um, I have another pack here of kind of blues and maybe even into some deep violets. It just helps me find the colors that I want faster and so um, as I begin I have to think about what is it that I want to you know pull out for color. What do I want to pull out for uh, textural effects and I do that often by the way I lay the colors together. And then another material that I like to use um, in a smaller, kind of quicker way of painting is uh, just a very glossy inkjet printer paper. Um, you can also buy UPO paper. It's very expensive. It works different. And um, like I said, I like my inks to grab the material or grab the, the surface material. And so I have found that I prefer not to use my inks on glass or tiles or uh, shiny, really smooth uh, surfaces that are sealed like UPO paper because of the results I want out of my ink and the effect I want. Again, here I'm talking about matching my materials up with my creative inspiration and what I want my work to produce. Yes, I have experimented on all those other materials. I've tried the inks out and I, I just had to play until I found what it was that I wanted uh, to use. So looking at the rest of my material space here now, um, I buy very um, high quality isopropyl alcohol. This is 99.8% purity and um, I prefer that because of the high saturation of the surface in my, my materials. Again, it's finding the things that work for what you wanna do. Um, you might not need this high of a percent of alcohol for what you wanna do, but uh, it is really important to me. Um, I always have paper towels handy, and then I also have to think about my surface because I'm working with alcohol inks, and so this stuff is gonna stain everything it touches. And if you don't like to walk around looking like you have, you know, like really tattooed up your hands all day for about two weeks <laughs> while it all wears off, or it'd be constant if you paint every day, um, you're gonna need to protect your hands. And so, you know, I've just found regular old um, medical gloves, I, they work great for this. 
Um, and I tend to uh, always, you know, just keep my gloves on. And yeah, once in a while they'll get a rip and I'll get paint in my glove, but um, who cares? The second thing that you're gonna need to protect is your clothes. Now, you know, I'm doing like a thing here, so <laughs> I am gonna cover my clothes up. But, uh, you know, if I'm just working at home and I'm just wearing my icky old clothes, then, you know, that's fine. Whatever, do what you want. But we're working with ink and we're working with alcohol in my case. And so um, it needs to be uh, safe. The other thing we have to consider, not only is our body, but our lungs. Um, alcohol, when you work with it in this quantity, goes crazy and it's aroma. And so it's really important to have an open window, um, maybe a light fan blowing, um, you know, get yourself some fresh air moving through the environment where you're working. If you have an exhaust fan, you could do that. Um, I'll often set up, um, you know, like my window with a fan blowing out and a window open to, to kind of cross air. Uh, even in the winter, I, you know, it's not too bad. So, um, and then finally, you can see my good old drop cloth that I just keep handy all the time. Uh, it's covered with ink. I uh, get a little ink on stuff, so what? <laughs> but um, protecting your table and your surface area, if you're worried about your floor, you might even put uh, materials down for that. Okay, so I have my work area ready to go. There's a, a little bit of equipment that I like. I, you know, there's a lot of things you can do with alcohol inks and you can watch all kinds of uh, YouTube videos on that. I keep it very simple um, because as you see, my painting doesn't look like an alcohol ink pour when it's done. Uh, once in a while, once in a great while, I will leave that poured surface because there's just something about it that really excites me. But most generally, my materials advance on. Pouring alcohol ink is a technique. It's just like I can learn to use this paintbrush a certain way. That doesn't make it the finished painting. And so I'm using the inks as a material and then I add acrylic paints, I add alcohol marker, I add paint marker sometimes. Um, I continue the painting after I've established um, the base for it. So let's talk about the spontaneous inspiration of just the materials. I've got a basic uh, little foam roller here that it has old residue of old ink in it that causes new colors to pop that I hadn't planned. Um, I've got a few uh, just basic uh, soft kind of sable-like brushes. And then these are uh, becoming a favorite as I work and develop the painting some more. Um, these are a water brush. Um, however, instead of putting water in it, I put alcohol in it. And um, they just help me kind of manipulate and move things in smaller ways. Um, I keep a, a good little squirt bottle full of alcohol all the time, just plain alcohol ready to go. And one of my favorite things too is some canned air. Um, I used to blow through a straw. <laughs> you know, you get pretty lightheaded pretty fast. But you can uh, do some fun things with uh, canned air. And I just use gravity. So let's actually start a big canvas. And one thing I like to do is keep my canvas off of the table. And so I just use some trays that I might even mix some inks in, but I'll, I'll use them as little feet to um, elevate my canvas just a little bit so that the ink will go all the way around and not be like stuck and picking up every single thing uh, down below here on the tabletop. And yeah, it's gonna come later. So now you can see that I've really cleared my surface. My work surface um, in my own studio is a little bit bigger, um, but I'm pretty sure I can manage this big canvas even on this table. Here's where the spontaneity begins. I just squirt ink and alcohol, and ooh, look, there's a little green left in this roller from another time and another life. And my first step 
is just to get that canvas absorbing the alcohol. And it looks like this canvas is going to start with a green tint. And so I wanna get some of that tint on the edges too. And this really is not a how-to video, sorry. I'm gonna go fast and just uh, not really talk about the how-to, but I wanna show you what inspires me. So this is really nice and wet, and I've got my ink bottle ready for a little more wet, and I just start to squirt some ink. And one way I work that ink and I get inspiration is just with gravity. And look at the beautiful textural feel that can come from that. I'm gonna pour a little alcohol on to push the ink a little bit more. And I'm wishing it was going a little further, so I really want to wet it because I do like my first layers to have um, kind of a lot of transparency going on. You know, just something that I've discovered that was pure alcohol, just moving that ink. Sometimes really interesting lines develop, and I like that. I'm gonna see now. I can give it a few squirts randomly. You see, now I'm thinking color and texture here. And I'm just gonna push that ink a little thinner in some places because the alcohol picks it up and moves it. Okay, getting some cool lines over there. So you notice I flipped it because I want those lines to keep developing. And I'm about to wear I think I would like to let this hold. However, now I'm thinking compositionally, I've kind of got a blue blob in the middle of this canvas. So I'm gonna lay it down and get some more alcohol going here. Ooh, now that's kind of cool. Um, you know, this is the spontaneity I'm talking about that ties into that inspiration and creativity that just can't be planned. And I kind of like that shape that's going there. So I'm just gonna take my roller and see if I can pull a little more of this blue. Um, ooh, see, look at that. That's pretty cool, what the roller just did. So I'll save that too. Now let's get a little blue over this way. And by just working my materials rather spontaneous and random, again, I'm giving the same consideration to my edges because now I'm thinking composition here and where I'm gonna want this to go as it develops. Ooh, there's some shots. I must've got down into the roller where there were some old shots of red and green. And so again, another inspiring surprise, Psh, gonna be there. That's fun, I'll just leave it. Maybe I even hit something on the table. Um, I never quite know sometimes where some of the inspirations come from. So you can see here how I use this material really um, becomes a, a, another creative kind of development. Okay, I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm liking that. I, I don't know why. I, I like that there's a blank spot here. I like that there's energy everywhere else. Um, I think I'm gonna go into a little bit with kind of thinking flower forms and sometimes I draw and now I am again thinking composition and considering my edges. I also am thinking about my focal point in this piece and I, I often use a rule of thirds layout as I think about focal points. So obviously this canvas is not shaped like this one. And so I'm shifting the way I'm gonna place things on the page. Composition can be very inspiring. And so um, it, it's really important to play with that. Now I go to the canned air. And I'm just gonna move some of that around. Some of it splatters again. 
that. Ooh, that made some interesting little like lines in there. I'm gonna leave that. I don't know what it's gonna be, but um, like I said, color and textural effects are my main emphasis. Okay, I'm, I'm getting the feel of a flower image right in there. And I'm also gonna introduce another color at this point. And so bringing, now I'm almost like, as you can see, drawing, but I'm gonna push that with the air. Now, if you've never used canned air with ink like this and you're using it so frequently and moving the jar so fast, they freeze. And so you have to switch out your cans. I always suggest having, I have like five cans going at once. Okay, that's working. So I'm gonna continue to add and move, blow a little air. Um, the piece develops however it develops. And you know, oh, that's getting kind of out of whack. Uh, it'll be cool, it'll, it'll be okay, you know? <laughs> just let it be what it is and, and see what comes. Ooh, look, that just picked up some of the blue and it's dragging it into the yellow. So I'm getting some really interesting texture and color things happening. Let me pop a little more on here. Sometimes I use my hand, sometimes my hand has color on it and I get surprises. Uh, so, as you see, this is a very spontaneous and um, nothing is particularly planned. I'm thinking about those flower shapes, but I'm not trying to be exactly, exactly on with them. And that's how I get my abstraction. And, you know, to me, that's inspiring. Okay, so now I really am not too sure about this interesting streaking, but I like that dark light, dark light, dark light. So I'm just gonna let that one go, and um, it's not making the same kind of pattern here, but I bet I can figure out something around with that. So I think I'll just let that come on around and dry and see what it gets. You'll notice as these dry, they lighten. Notice how the background is uh, really looking quite light now, almost like I hardly put any ink on it. Um, those kinds of transparency effects are really key. And, um, you know, see what they come out to. But I know I'm making it sound like I'm not thinking about this and I'm not doing anything in particular, but Yes, I do have in mind these blue flowers. And if I go back to some of my original source image on those flowers, and let me see, I think it got buried too deep. There it is. I have this big red hibiscus at my house. And I'm uh, just kind of thinking of that circular overlap, almost pinwheel-like twirl when I'm laying these colors in. Now I don't wanna have just boing, boing, two things here. So again, I gotta think compositionally. If I use the rule of thirds, these four points as if it was like a dice are gonna be really interesting areas mentally to people. And so I've already got something happening in this one. Maybe I'll pull something up to another direction here. And so this is where I'm just making some decisions about putting some ink down or doing something with color that can become kind of a draw to the eye. So you notice I'm working back, almost background-like again, and I'm gonna push some of that color around over in that background a little. See, I didn't like those streaks, so I just like wipe them, and then they become a nice fuzzy line instead. There's, there's things you'll figure out if you just kind of let yourself play. You know, that it, there's no certain way to do this. It just, it is what it is. And, and you just experiment and see what things do become. Now, I'm kind of thinking this over here that I did prior could become edges for 
maybe a third flower there. So I'm going to make some longer lines into this space and incorporate maybe a little bit of that in. And you can see my um, space is changing quite a bit. Let's go back to the air. I'm kind of getting a freeze out of this can, which can do some neat stuff with the inks. But I'm going to switch cans. And I do love it when it rolls up and causes different value change. So when I get that, I'll often like stop. So what I'm pointing out then are things that get me excited. Things that, you know, like, whoa, that's working. That's the effect that I want to get. But you notice how it is just a, a random um, use of the materials to do that. So let's now, I put that dark blue down. Now I'm going to work a little bit of lighter, brighter blue over it. And I'm also going to pour some ink in between there and really get some of that ink to flow. I'm holding the hand upside down so it's making it freeze. to give this a break and I will let the painting sit um, I'll put it aside I'll get some other materials out and I'll think about you know where I might go next so this would be a good time I'll have multiple paintings going at once and when this canvas is setting aside to dry I'll just work up a few almost like little sketches and so I'll line my table with uh, papers and work with them in the same kind of technique. So this is phase one. Um, I think about background, I think about big chunks of color. I start to think compositionally about lights and darks happening on the surface. All of that can change and develop as I work along. But um, for right now, I would probably leave this painting alone and let it get some good steel uh, kind of dry time and surface going on. Thank you.